Hey, welcome to the CGM Podcast. Uh, my name is Michael Gossett, and today we have Chance Real, our creative arts pastor and hey our community expert. Community expert. That's my that's my secondary <laughs> title, and uh, I own it. I love it. Yeah, love I do love it because yeah. today, um, you know, last week we opened up the discussion of what does it look like um, to disciple as God designed. So, mm-hmm. what is the um, the role of discipleship in the church? What is the role of discipleship in your own life? And so we kind of broke down uh, what Jesus told uh, his disciples before he ascended. He said that you are to go, um, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. That's right. And so one thing that we um, understand as we look through the New Testament, and the Great Commission is being played out, uh, they're going out, they're starting new works, starting new churches, uh, you see um, this unique group of individuals clumping together, known as the church, this is the ecclesia, it's the called out people, uh, but in Acts chapter 2, um, you see the function of a small group of God's people yeah. living and um, acting in God's mission together. For sure. All right, so what are your thoughts? Chance, open us up and give us your insight well, since you are the community expert. One of the things that that I've loved that I've heard you say, um, I, I can't remember if you got it from someone else or if it was your original thought. Either way. We'll see in just excellent. a second. But you talked about the Great Commission, and you always say that it's bookended. I, I said it last week. Did you? Okay, I did. good. Is it power and presence? Is that right? Okay, good. Man, good, good, go. good. Wow. Is that you or is that somebody else? That, so I have said that multiple times. Yeah. Um, I don't know where I, where I got that from. I almost said where I stole it from. I yeah. never intended to steal it. Um, I can't give it. you... It's a good thing. I, I, I can't give you the source yeah. because... Um, I've used it so much that I actually can't remember its origin, and I've gone back to try to find it, and I can't find it anywhere. Right. Uh, I Googled it. Well, either way, <laughs> wherever it came from, yeah. it's great because it takes the Great Commission and frames it in a way that, in, in my mind, it frames it in a way that paints the reality. And the reality is what we're called to do is really difficult. Yeah. It arguably is impossible without the power of God and the presence of God, right? Yeah. Uh, but I would add to that also without support of believers. Yeah. And there's this role of community in the life of a believer that what we're called to do and this life that we're called to, the standard that the Bible puts in place for us is going to be really difficult, if not impossible, without support, without community support. And then if you're a non-believer, um, aren't you just searching for that as well? Yeah. There's a, it's built into us. There's a hole in our spirit that has to be filled uh, by community with the Lord and with other believers. Okay, so I'm going to piggyback on that mm-hmm. because um, it is something that everyone is longing for. Everybody. Okay, so let's, let's go back to that really quick mm-hmm. because in Genesis chapter 2, verse 18, uh, the Lord God said, it is not good for man to be alone. That's right. Okay, and so that's not just for the function of marriage. It wasn't because Adam um, needed to be married, although that is part of it, okay, that marital covenant relationship. Right. But it's also the fabric of our design. It's in our DNA. Um, just as the Trinity exists um, three in one, mm-hmm. uh, we are made in the image of God to exist in community in that way. Right. That we are to function in community together. Um, I think it was Dietrich Bonhoeffer in um, Life Together that said, uh, sin demands isolation. You know, So sin flourishes when we neglect biblical community, when we neglect God's people, when we neglect being with other brothers and sisters in Christ, you're opening the door for sin to flourish. That's right. And so we we need one another. Uh, So Greg Ogden, Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to look up this quote really fast because I want to know exactly what book it is. Oh, it's in uh, Unfinished Business. Okay. Okay. Unfinished Unfinished Business. Business. Greg Ogden. Uh, Greg Ogden, great book on discipleship and the need for community. But he says this, he says, the church in its most fundamental essence is nothing less than an interdependent, life-pulsating people who are indwelled by the presence of a resurrected and reigning Christ. Mm. So 
the key word there is interdependent. All right, so where we opened up last week, um, Chance, is um, we talked about 1 Corinthians chapter 12, where Paul gives us the picture of the body Mm -hmm. um, anatomically, physically, but he relates it to the church, and he says that in the same way, uh, the church is to interact and function uh, like the body. Right. That the, the hand cannot say to the foot, I have no need for you, that I cannot say to the ear, um, and that God himself has given you your gifts to arrange you in such a way so that the body of Christ may flourish together in his mission. That's right. Um, and so that's where we get at. And so how do we do that? together. Yeah. Well, well, okay. Because if you just come into a worship service, all right, wherever you are, um, wherever you attend church, if you just slide in and out, mm-hmm. um, you're not really in community, are you? No, you're not. And you might, you could argue that you're in community with, uh, with the Lord, with the spirit of the Lord in a worship service. You have that, but absolutely, um, you could also say that Adam was in community with the Lord Yeah, and uh, he still saw fit to send him what I have the ESV right here and I was looking it up because I was going to see which word it said. Yeah. Um, but he describes uh, what would become Eve as a helper. Yep. Someone to help him. Uh, and then in first Corinthians where you're just reading uh, about the body, the body metaphor, um, the, it is this idea of working in harmony. And if you don't have that harmony, you're missing something. And the verse that I was going to read that stuck out to me of this section as the last verse 26 in that uh, section there, if one member suffers, all suffer together. That's right. If one member is honored, all rejoice together. Yeah. If you're just coming into worship and sitting and attending and then bailing um, and you don't connect with anybody, how can you suffer with someone else? How can you be helped? How can you find helpers among Christians? In the most community? fundamental sense, yeah. because no one can know you to even suffer right. with it's you. It's as simple as... Uh, if you don't get to know anybody, they, they literally have no opportunity to get to know you, and therefore you can't go back and forth. Um, my wife, Shelly, excels at this because she just values community, and she just has a natural gifting of creating community among people, and I, I uh, respect and admire that about her. And something she told me once, uh, we were at our, our previous church, actually, and she was creating community there as well, and she said, you know, I was talking to this person, and they were frustrated about not being able to connect and get plugged in. The church is too big. We can't find our place. And uh, she said, well, how how many people have you talked to in in church? How how many people have you sat down and just said, hey, my name is so-and-so. What's your name? How long have you been here? Just start a conversation. And the person was like, well, you know, we haven't haven't really done that just yet. But um, there's a a two-way street in community. Yeah. If you're just coming to church and leaving – and not really trying to give people the benefit of the doubt and find your spot or, or meet somebody, then you can't say that church doesn't have community or um, whatever. It's got to be Or effort. I can't find it. Yeah, I can't find it. I mean, it. if you're not looking. Exactly, yeah. Uh, so, Chance, how do you... Um, let's just give us this. Mm-hmm. How have you seen... I, I'm, I'm scared to use this word, but you know what I mean. How have you seen the benefit of biblical community in your own life? Um, I'm putting you on the spot. Yeah, no, that's great. Gosh, countless ways. The, the easy and obvious answer is any time that you've gone through something that's difficult, uh, there's support, Yeah. right? I mean, that's, that's a simple way to put it. But to, to, leave, to leave that example on the side for a second and get to one that I think has made more of an impact on me personally. I think that when I was in my developmental years of becoming a Christian, where it became real serious to me, probably early high school through the end of high school, let's just say high school years, um, I grew from teachings that I was sitting under. I grew from worship that I was participating in. I grew from leading worship. All those things are true, but my main growth and uh, sanctification process played out through a group of guys that I was a part of, and not that they were necessarily teaching me and, uh, 
learning new things biblically from those other guys because they were just peers that were also learning and growing. But the, the ability to sit down at the end of the day and say to a, another believer who's listening and say, hey, here's what I'm thinking about the Lord on, and here's what I'm walking through today, and to have the feedback and to, to look around a room and know, hey, these people know what I'm going through. They're praying for me. They're walking the same path as I am. There was something about it that gave me the the energy to take the next step. Does that make sense? Right, right. Um, when you feel known or seen, you are motivated to be more and be better and to pursue and to not give up. You know, all those uh, things that kind of relate to sports or uh, just the general how do I accomplish this big task ahead? You find motivation by your support system, yes. right? And and your community can spur you on and exhort you to keep going through the hard times. It can celebrate with you through the, the victories. And all those things equal this sense of, um, yeah, I can I can wake up today and, and have a win under That's my right. belt. You know what I mean? So <clears throat> if you don't have that... Yeah. Um, what would be a step to take in order to find that? Because we do hear that all the time. Yep. We we hear, uh, man, the, the, the church is just too big. I, I'm overlooked. I can't, uh, there's no right. way to find community there. Or we hear um, maybe uh, kind of on the other end of the same coin maybe is that um, we don't want to be a part of this kumbaya mm. feeling. Um, I don't want to just go and share feelings because that's not biblical community no, necessarily. No, it's not. All right, it, so, there's a part of it, but all it's right, not, so help it's us not balance those things. What do you think? Gosh, it it's um, you know the first thing to say there I think has to be that community is a process. It's not like you can show up one day and leave that day and now you have community. Yeah. It's a start. You gotta you gotta have a starting point. Um, I think that that starting point is different for each person. Yeah. For some people, it might be just a handshake and a hello. Yeah. Because uh, that's a you don't want to overlook that. That's quite a hurdle for some people to get over. Yeah. Just to, to work up the gumption to go up to somebody and say, "Hey, my name is Chance. Great to meet you. What's your name?" Yeah. Um, that's a starting point for some people. For some people. They're incredible conversationalists, but it's it's hard to go deeper than that. So for right. those people, maybe the best starting point um, at Green Acres is to, to get in a connect group. Yeah. Because you have to get with a group of people that you repeatedly are with right. in order to build something. Yeah. And even the, the guy that or girl who starts with just a handshake, eventually they're going to have to get to the point where they're shaking the same person's hand each week. Right. And then they, they extend the conversation each week. Um but you got to find a place where you can get in a group with the same people so this process can unfold. Um, connect groups, another, another quote of yours is that connect groups are our primary vehicle for discipleship, right? Yeah. So if you're not in a connect group here and you are a, a believing in Jesus Christ member saved of this church, then you're missing it because that is our primary vehicle for what we're talking about. Get in a connect group, get there every week, and spend time with those people building relationships. Does yeah. that kind of make sense with what, no, what you're saying? No, like, absolutely. Yeah, because there's there's kind of this misunderstanding that we, you know, hold hands and just sing together in circles. That yeah. That's biblical community. No, it's it's no. just so much more than that. It's not, mm -hmm. um, you know, to me... That's what I hear from men a lot of yeah. times. Yeah, the fellows that, have a hard time with they, this. Yeah, they don't want to. They want to stiff arm any emotion mm -hmm. or attachment or anything like that. Uh, the problem is, is that when we do that, uh, you're not stiff arming people. You're yeah. you're stiff arming God's design for your life. That's right. In order for you to be a better man in Christ, for you to flourish in your marriage, for you to flourish as a dad, and the same thing for ladies. Yeah. Um, so. Uh, we know this because you remember back in the 90s when Friends came out? Yeah. All right, we're about to show well, our age a little bit. I don't know that I remember when it came out, but... Okay, do you remember watching Friends yes, growing up? Okay, yep, I sure do. So I don't watch I that can, trash. I can go with that. Yeah, me either. Okay, that was not a setup. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just kidding. All Definitely right, but, not. Okay, what turned the world onto this mm -hmm. 
was that they were seeing a group of friends do life together. Yeah. And they were recognize, recognizing that in their own life, man, man I, I want that. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I, I want to have friends around me. Like, I want to do life with people. I don't want to be alone. Mm-hmm. Well, the reason why is that we all have a longing for it. Whether you realize it or not, you have a desire for biblical community. Yeah. The absolutely. problem is, is that biblical community is the only community that lasts. Right. Um, because, um, <laughs> as you see on the last episode, they just, they just go. Yeah. It's well, that's so what I was going to say. What, what was missing from Friends, if we're going with Friends? Okay. What well, was missing yeah. out of that group? Yeah, we need a better show. I mean, it's, we can go. We'll the, stay there. Yeah, okay, it's anyways. Um, there is a show called Community. But that's different. It's community college. I love community, the show. <laughs> Don't go there. Watch it, but We're not going to go there. Okay. All right, because I've never seen it, so I can't confirm nor deny. I found uh, out I.T. Brian loves community. Yeah. By the way, go ahead. Uh, no one knows who that is. So great. No. Um, Need to meet him. So back to our. Yeah. What, what were we talking about? Friends. Friends. What's missing, the missing from component. the friends group? Okay, so <clears throat> first of all, there is only one binding agent mm-hmm. that creates community. What is it? That's the Spirit of God. Okay. All right, so if you think about building a house, all right, and you have, uh, listen, I have a four-year-old at home who loves Legos. So if you think about these Legos, okay, mm-hmm. um, each of them has a connecting piece on it, right, right. so that they can stack on each other. Yep. All right, so God arranges, God gives gifts, but the connection is the Spirit of God. What holds it all together? Okay, so yeah. if you're th- talking about brick, it's the mortar that holds the bricks in place, and so that the building can be built. Um, that is the Spirit of God. There's nothing else that can keep us in community. You know right. why? Because we're all sinful, broken people just trying to live out God's grace in our life that Absolutely. has been bestowed on us. So there will be a day that we disagree. Sure. There will be a time where in biblical community that there's strife, there is um, disagreements, or whatever it is, okay? Um because Jesus says in this world there will be many trials, yeah. many tribulations. And what keeps us together is not because we have that, that we're singing kumbaya together all the time and we're just uh, emotionally attached to one another or anything like that. Mm-hmm. What keeps us bound is the Spirit of God that is directing us and keeping us aimed toward the mission of God. Yep. All right, so that's what biblical community looks like. So... There are three things that, that we really talk about at, you know, for a healthy connect group. Okay. All right, so I'm going to test you. Okay. Do you know what those three I'm things are? I'm thinking of them right now, and uh, I'm not sure. That do you remember do. my pie chart? No, I don't remember this. Are you serious? Yeah, it'll come back to me quick. All Maybe. right, so there are three components of a healthy small group. Okay. All right, and, and really we get this from Acts chapter 2, verse, verses 47 Four, through yep. The 40s. 49 or something, whatever it I is. I'm sorry, here. I'm off. Um, but we get it from there, Acts chapter 2. two uh, 42 through 47. Uh, 42 through 47. Yeah. I was way off. Um, so what we see is that, um, why don't you just read it real fast? The whole thing? No. Here, just give me your Bible. There you go. All right. Um, Acts chapter 2, verse 42. And they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching. Yep. Okay, so... Um, there has to be an element of theological training, meaning uh, to the teaching of the apostles, meaning God's Word. Word. Okay, so uh, that has to be a central component because what you see with friends is just a great hangout. Yeah. Okay. So you're talking about specifically right now in connect groups. I'm talking about in a group in a biblical community. You have to make room for not just fellowship and eating, but teaching and learning this. So theology. Yep. All right, we just, God's word. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. All right, and then, okay, fellowship. Mm-hmm. All right, so it says uh, they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and the fellowship of the breaking of bread and the prayers, and all came upon every soul. Many were being saved. All right, many were being saved. Yeah. All right, so um, you have this concept of God's word, uh, fellowship, and mission. All right, many people were getting saved. Yeah. All right, because they undergirded their action with God's word. Um, They did it together, united with one another, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and others were getting saved because of what God was doing in their community. That's right. 
So we, we say that if you are heavy in one area, uh, then it's going to uh, cause an imbalance of real biblical community that promotes discipleship within that community. For sure. But if we devote ourselves in this way, in the same way that they did, and, and let's just be honest here, we're all aiming toward this first century understanding of what does a small group look like? What, is, what should our connect groups look like? Mm-hmm. Um, if discipleship is our end goal and this is what we're called to do, um, then this is what we should see. We should see theological development. We should see uh, fellowship taking place. And we should see active missional living yeah. from all of the members. So what, <clears throat> what of those three is the easiest and what's the hardest, you think? I think the easiest is theological training. Why, why would you say that? Because you would have assumed that you would say fellowship. Not you, but just people. You would assume the answer would so be, well, fellowship let's go easy. to friends. Yeah. Okay, back to our analogy there with friends. Yep. They were incredible at fellowship. Yeah. They sat around. They drank coffee together. They shared jokes together. They're sharing meals together. They're doing Thanksgiving together, yeah. Christmas together. All well, right, the whole every show holiday. really was just watching them fellowship. Right. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like, they were very good at it. As if they're friends. That's right. Okay, they're, great. Yeah. All right, okay, so good. that's a good, good title good. of a show. Um, but that's what you see with them. Uh, there's nothing outside of that, mm-hmm. okay? Um, now, when you look at um, the church, um, you, you'll see that it is most easy, in, in my estimation, because we drift there, to just simply lecture. Yeah. All right, so Check this the box. is teaching done. Got it. And that there's there there you don't it doesn't require interaction. Right. Okay. Now go with me on this. Yeah. Okay, because I know that it does. But but just teaching, all you need is one person and an audience, and you can teach. For sure. Yeah. All right. But it does not equal transformation. Right. Okay. It does not equate to uh, missional living necessarily. Right. Um. And so when we have the a heaviness on lecturing, and and a uh, basically a transfer of information from one person to another. Um, that's that's like the old school Sunday school model of how it developed sure. first. Okay, yeah. is that you have a lecturer and someone who just teaches God's word and they just soak and listen. Um, but that's not what we see in Scripture. Is the design of biblical community right? There's um, a lot more to it. There's there's a lot more to it. Um, primarily, there is community. All right, now, what happened though in the '80s and '90s is that you had this shift away from the Sunday school model. Model, 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 model. model thank yeah. you. From the Sunday school model, and then it, it kind of shifted into um, what is known as a cell group or organic movement mm-hmm. um, that really focused on the community aspect. All right, so. Um, then it kind of went to these home group style, these meeting and coffee houses. And, and by the way, I'm, this isn't bad. Right. Okay, what, what was happening? History. It's, history it's not what bad happened. what happened with the Sunday school model. Man, sure. lives were changed because of it. Okay, Absolutely. Lives were changed. But I'm just using it as an illustration. Um, and so what ended up happening is you had, you had a group of God's people that were just hanging out together, but they weren't growing in the teaching of mm-hmm. Christ. Mm-hmm. Uh, they weren't growing in their understanding of who God is. They weren't spurring each other along in Christ likeness. They're just really good friends that h- hang out. Right. Uh, well, it never ended up transferring to missional living. Mm-hmm. All right. So then you had another wave. All right. And now we have these mission groups that come on the scene, and mission groups. Um, they were all about uh, serving outside the walls. They were all about making sure that we are. Uh, Living missionally, okay? So missional living was a buzzword for uh, right. 90s, early 2000s. I mean, this really became a buzzword. Um, still is today, probably, I guess. But Is this the group that kind of eventually started to think that organized church is missing it in some ways? Is that So I think all of these have that tendency, but primarily, yes, yeah. from that mission group style right, living. Right. And, and once again, it's not because of a poor intent. No, it's, it's just not because they natural... were... Evolution or de-evolution. What, what, what they were essentially trying to do is like, man, we're watching Jesus. He's always on mission. Yeah, yeah. I think that's a good person to follow, yeah, right? That's okay, true. that's a good life to to want to live after. Yep. Here, here's the problem with 
a mission only focus though. Okay. So everything we do is missional. All right. Please don't misunderstand me. Sure. Okay. Everything we do, we should be reaching people for Jesus. Jesus himself said that I came to save, uh, seek and save the lost. Right. We should do that. Equal. Yeah. But it has to be undergirded by theological development and community. Yes. All right. So if you have all mission and no theological development, what that can do is that you are trying to reach people, but you just don't know where to reach them toward. Mm -hmm. You don't know who to connect them to. You don't know how to help them grow in Christ likeness because you have no theological undergirding to help you with uh, that aspect of discipleship. Right. Okay. If you have all community, um, those things get neglected. So you can see how an imbalance in any direction, okay, can really cause a disruption in God's mission. So what we want to do is we want to be balanced between um, we want to study God's word. We, we, want, we want to be undergirded with um, his word because that is our direction for missional living. Yeah. But as we do that, we need to understand that we have to do it locked arms with brothers and sisters who are doing life with us. Yeah. I mean, that's what you see in the New Testament. So to, to wrap this up, I want to ask you this question because okay. I think it ties it all together really well. We started on the Great Commission. Yeah. Book ended by the power and the presence, right? Mm -hmm. um, in the Great Commission, he tells us to go and make disciples. Uh -huh. So there's the missional part, right? And uh, teaching them to observe all that I've commanded. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's the teaching part. Answer, answer this question. Who is the Great Commission directed toward? Who is that for? Who is it given to? Yeah. Um, so it was given to the apostles. Yep. Uh, but it was not limited to an apostolic, li uh, apostolic living. Right. Okay. So what that means is that it goes beyond to every follower of Jesus. Right. So he's talking to, uh, literally talking to, a group of people, yes. right? So he's telling them, you guys now go together and do this, right? Yeah. And then in the bigger picture, what you, as you just described, he's talking to us. So I think that, that gets you the community part, right? He didn't say individually, I want you guys to go and work collectively, yeah. go and do. Yeah. So it, it really is the perfect model for community and mission and Everything we're talking about, the Great Commission, those few verses right there in Matthew are just really perfect for this. Yeah. And I love that our church is set up to follow it exactly. Well, you know, it, it requires um, intentional, sacrificial living to be in community. For sure. Um, because you have to sacrifice your time. You have to sacrifice resources. You have to sacrifice, um, you know, things that maybe you want to do to create margin so that you can pour in, but that, that's the expectation of Christ, that he, he has called us and he has given biblical community as a gift yeah. for us to flourish together yep. here on this side of eternity. For sure. And um, as big as our church is, I really believe that this is an area that we excel in. Yeah. So, so if you're at Green Acres and you're not in community, uh, don't, don't wait. Plug in. Get in a group. Come talk to me. Come talk to Pastor Michael. Anybody that you see with a, a staff tag, we want to help you get into community because we believe in it. So don't, don't let any time go by. Um, there's a place for you to plug in and get to know people uh, Absolutely. at our church, and it's worth it. It's totally well, worth and it. Let, me, let me just say this one thing. Maybe you're at a church that maybe they don't have a small group ministry, or yeah. maybe, maybe you're struggling finding community, okay? Um, let me, we have a free resource, okay, that we call our discipleship guide, mm -hmm. and, and you go... Uh, you can go to jbc.org and you can find uh, that free resource. Okay, you just download it, use it however you need it. Um, but let me encourage you to grab one, two, three other guys. Maybe you uh, are married. Grab three other couples and just start working through that guide together. Yeah, and just watch what God does in your life as He spurs you along in Christ likeness. Yes. In community, and who knows what God will do to use you even at your own church uh, for his glory. And that web address is jbc.org forward slash discipleship. Uh, it's a great resource. It may have some Green Acres wording, but it'll work for, for your church. Hey, you uh, take it out anytime. and use it how you need yeah. it. 
Absolutely. Right. Hey, we're so glad that you got to tune in today. We're going to continue our conversation uh, with Discipleship Matters next week. Uh, but until then, you can subscribe somehow. How do you do that? Oh, to the update? Because I messed it up last week. Yeah, so if you go to the home page and just scroll down, there's a, a section there that says uh, gbc.org forward slash update. You click on that, and it'll give you our weekly email with a link to everything, including this podcast. Um, or you can go to our media tab and go to the podcast section, and you can subscribe there. Uh, you can go to our YouTube channel and subscribe to this podcast because uh, we put every episode out on YouTube as well. And uh, that's I think that's all the ways to, to get it. Follow Instagram, social. It's all there. All right. Everywhere. Hey, we'll see you next week. Thanks, yep. Chance. Appreciate it. Hey, thanks for listening to today's episode and joining in on our conversation. If you liked what you heard or you want to know more about Green Acres, go check out our website at gabc.org or follow us on Instagram at gabc underscore Tyler. Have a great day.